right. Well, I just want to say, first of all, thank you for all being here. Um, it's been so fun as everyone's come in to see so many friends, so many friendly faces, so many people that we've worked with over the years. And I just want to say thank you for all that you do for our community. In December, the commissioners and I were heading to a tour of the Marion County Jail when I got a phone call from my wife. She told me that um, a box truck had just rear-ended her and on 99E, and that although the kids, everybody was okay, the car was pretty bad, and, and she asked if I could come help. So I texted the commissioners and said, you guys are going to have to do the tour. I got to go take care of my family. And I drove up to Hubbard, and when I got there, our van was like an accordion. The, the back windows were smashed. Glass was strewn throughout um, the interior of the car. And the back doors actually were, were curved around my daughter's car seat. So you can imagine sort of my heart rate when I saw this. As I pulled over to park, though, I also saw a bright yellow Hubbard fire engine. And four little girls' faces pop up out of the window, and they all say, hi, Dad. <laughs> the volunteer firefighters had allowed them to stay in the engine to keep out of the cold um, while they waited for the tow truck and me to arrive. And in that moment, my heart rate went from about 200 to 50 because there were volunteers in this community who were taking care of my family when I wasn't there to take care of them. And I don't know if any of you have ever experienced something like that, but I don't think that ever leaves you. Those volunteer firefighters could have left once they knew that everybody was safe and okay. They didn't have to let a bunch of kids they didn't know crawl around in their workspace. Frankly, I'm not sure I would have let a bunch of kids I didn't know crawl around in my workspace. But that, that hospitality they showed and that warmth is what makes Marion County special. Here in Marion County, when something goes wrong, people don't say, somebody should do something about that. Instead, we say, I'm going to do something about that. And this may seem like kind of a simple thing, but it's actually the essential thing. Over the past few years, many of us have looked at our state and our country and thought, man, it sure seems like things are going down the drain. And they have been. But many of you also have said, it's my job to do something about that. And you did. And just that little bit of courage can be contagious. When one of us says, I'm going to do something for the good of my community, it inspires the rest of us to do that as well. And this past year showed everybody what Marion County was all about. The Boys and Girls Club just opened on East Lancaster. Um, and that was the site of the Epping family's home. Sean and Gary, their family, donated that land. And Sue Bloom, God bless her, she drove us all to give money. And as a result, there's this beautiful new facility um, that's available to kids in an underserved part of our community. There's a new YMCA downtown Salem, just a couple blocks from where we work. And there are social services now available at that facility to people from all backgrounds and all different economic statuses. <clears throat> this new facility, as you all know, was a brainchild of Dick Withnell and Peter Courtney, and the rest of us just got out of the way. <laughs> Up in Detroit, you can still hear the sounds of the saws and the hammers as people continue to rebuild after the fire, and a coalition of small businesses here in the community got together. An individual donated the old high school gymnasium, and these businesses donated materials and work and labor, and they just gave the city a brand new city council hall a community hall, and uh, fire engine bays for that city. It was all just given to the city and to the people who live there. In Brooks, the garbage haulers, uh, this year they, they invested and built a brand new state-of-the-art material recovery facility to improve even more on our recovery rates here in Marion County so that more of our garbage can be put to beneficial use. In St. Paul, the fire department built a fuel storage facility so that, God forbid, if another disaster strikes, they will have uh, enough fuel for their emergency responders and for their generators. And all these projects, as you know, come on top of the Union Gospel Mission that was privately funded and built and opened in 2021. The government didn't do any of these projects. Instead, we did what we ought to do, which is to get out of the way and to support our community that's already flourishing around us. The investment in this county by the people who live here is incredible. And what's so wonderful is that as commissioners, we don't have to convince our constituents to invest in the community. 
the constituents are leading us. We just have to roll up our sleeves and to get to work next to you all. And we are. As Commissioner Cameron and Commissioner Bethel said, in the next few years, you're going to see a whole bunch of projects come to fruition that have, have been dreams. The Donald Aurora Interchange will be completely rebuilt. That funding is now secure. Brooks is going to get an entirely new water system so that community can continue to grow. We're finally implementing the schedule, as Commissioner Cameron said, for the sewer system. That's going to be done within four years in Gates and Mill City. Not only is that going to allow the community to rebuild, but there's going to be new residential and commercial spaces that weren't possible before the fire as a result of that. We're going to rebuild the radio system for our first responders. And we're in the middle of constructing a new health building that will open this fall that will make our public and behavioral health services more accessible than ever before. We're bringing 50 new jail beds online this summer to address rising crime in our community. And as Commissioner Bethel just said, we also just welcomed the first residents into our her place, our his place home, uh, substance abuse recovery house for dads with kids. And we're partnering with United Way, thank you Rhonda, um, to expand their safe sleep facility so that women in our community living on our streets don't have to be afraid of being assaulted when they go to bed at night. Over the last few years, we focused on crisis recovery and response. And it was good work, and we were proud to do it. But I'm excited that looking at the next few years, we're going to be working on building spaces and places that have never before existed in our community, and they're going to have a transformative impact. And this is a community that's worth investing in. Marion County is a young community. Our average age is younger than the state as a whole. <clears throat> and we're a growing community. Over the past few years, every metro area county, the Portland metro area, has lost taxpayers. But we haven't. People have been moving into Marion County. Our median income has been growing, and our poverty has been declining. The number of people living in poverty has gone down 5% during the last census window. And we have the third most diverse economy in the state of any county. But as you heard, we do have some serious challenges. And Commissioner Cameron touched on this. I'm going to go a little bit more in depth. The dysfunction at the state hospital is a serious threat to this community. You've already probably read all about it. But the short summary is there are individuals in our community who are credibly accused of crimes who also have a mental illness. Currently, they're treated for their illness at the state hospital. But in the course of a recent lawsuit, the Oregon Health Authority decided not to defend the current law and agreed to release these individuals from the state hospital within one year, whether or not they're stable and whether or not they're able to stand trial. Not only that, but OHA is seeking to codify this decision with legislation that's currently pending at the state house. As a result, these individuals are being released into our community as we speak, and Marion County is doing the best we can to keep our community safe. But it's a serious challenge. Just a few months ago, one of these individuals who had come to the state hospital from Lane County had his charges dropped and walked out the state hospital doors onto the streets of Salem. And while OHA may not like that the number of mentally ill people in our community who are dangerous has increased, it controls the only hospital level of care of any significant capacity for these individuals in the state. Caring for these people is OHA's responsibility. There are almost no secure residential facilities that will take patients accused of violent Measure 11 crimes in our state. <clears throat> and OHA knew this when they agreed to this disastrous policy. There is quite simply nowhere for these people to go. And what's so infuriating about the situation is that our income tax dollars are still paying OHA's $30 billion biennial budget, but overnight, OHA just decided not to provide adequately for those mentally ill individuals in their care. And while the need for the state hospital services has increased, and while OHA's budget has ballooned, the state hospital has actually decreased the number of beds available over the last 20 years. The other day, I was driving my five-year-old, and unfortunately, due to the nature of my job, she overhears more than she should, and we're driving by this great big building and she says, hey, Daddy, is that the hospital where they kick the patients out before they're better? <laughs> Even my daughter, my five-year-old, knows that this is wrong. If OHA doesn't resolve the situation soon, people in our community will be harmed. It's not a matter of if, 
but when. So although I don't normally do this, I'm asking you to call, mail, email, <clears throat> talk in person to your state legislator, the governor, OHA, and beg them to do the right thing and ensure that the individuals accused of crimes who are the most dangerous have a secure healthcare facility to go to before they're released from the state hospital if they're not well enough to stand trial. In the meantime, our sheriff's deputies, our local police, our district attorney, our deputy district attorneys, our judges, our crisis center, and our health department will continue to do everything in their power to keep all of us safe. It may not be their fault, but unlike OHA, they take responsibility because they're from Marion County. The other day, I was at a Rotary meeting, and I saw Rich Davis is here. I'm going to embarrass you, and I apologize. I didn't even tell you. Well, I told you as you were walking in. <laughs> I, it just struck me. We're, we're in this meeting, and Rich, at the end of the meeting, kind of like off the cuff, it says, hey, um, I noticed that the parking bumpers at the Heritage Center, the paint's peeling. They're looking kind of shabby. So I'm going to go out and power wash them, and then I'm going to paint them. And uh, somebody else in the meeting is like, how many are there? Oh, eight. And somebody else is like, well, you can't use a roller, you know, you got to use a brush. And Rich is like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll use a brush. I think it's going to take about four hours. I think I'm going to go out this weekend if anybody wants to join me. And I was, I was leaving the meeting, and I was thinking, you know what's so remarkable about that conversation is how unremarkable the people who were having it thought it was. It was like totally normal for them. We have people in this community who, who it's totally normal for them to think, I'm going to go fix the peeling bumper, uh, parking bumpers at a facility I don't even own. <laughs> because it's important to our community. It's important to the people who live here. There's this sort of unstated uh, theme of the conversation, which is it's our community and it's our job to protect it. And conversations like this happen every day all across Marion County in schools, churches, small businesses, civic organizations. And although, you know, I've... Unfortunately, now that I'm a grown-up, I, I have to realize this. There's no superheroes in real life. This community's had a pretty awesome 180 years, just with ordinary people like you and me coming together and trying to do what's best for the place we call home. And I'm convinced that our country's in a rut right now, not because our system of self-government doesn't work, but because we've had some loud voices telling everybody not to take responsibility, not to trust self-government. They've told everybody to stop participating. And unfortunately, too many people have listened to that. But as I look around this room, I see that, and I know that, you haven't. And I'm grateful to you for that. There's something special about the families and individuals who have protected and preserved this community over the years. And I've learned about public service by watching you all do it. The big difference today is between communities where people take responsibility and communities where they don't. We've all seen places where when things are going wrong, the leaders and the citizens all start blaming each other. and They all start denying their own responsibility for the problem. As a result, nothing improves. Marion County is not one of these places. Marion County is a place where people take responsibility for things that are broken, even if they're not our own. As I mentioned earlier, that's why people are moving here. <laughs> so, for those of you who may be new here, <clears throat> I also want to say welcome to you. We're happy you're here. This is a wonderful place to live and work and raise your family. And now that you're part of our community, you also have a responsibility. We need you to invest in Marion County. It doesn't matter whether it's your local church or small business, your nonprofit, volunteer board. You need to give back to this community. And I want to be clear, I don't mean a political campaign or advocating for somebody else to do something for our community. You have to give of yourself. We all do. This community relies on all of us. Every single one of us is necessary, and nobody is irrelevant. And that's what makes the state of our county strong.